<coughs> hey guys, what's up? G Cubed here. Today we are going to be looking at how to use the Cura slicing software. So you're going to want to start by opening up Cura on your computer. So we'll go to their website. You can just find it here. And it's this one up top. You type in Cura. It's this first one that comes up right here. Click on that. Open that up. So this is their website. This is what will happen. You don't need to worry about this top part. You can just click out of that. Click on here where it says download for free right here. Click on that. So I'll open this up. And I've already downloaded this, so I don't really need to do this. But you can choose whatever you're working on. I'll just say personal projects. And then you basically go through and answer these questions. But since I already have it downloaded, I'm not going to do this again. You just fill this in and click download. Once you download, it takes a few minutes to download, you open it up and you will see this. Something You'll see something like this. So this is Cura. And basically how you use this is pretty simple. So Cura is a slicing, slicing software. So you don't design things. You don't design models on here. But you get them ready to be 3D printed. So what we can do is we can open up a file. So we go over here and click open file. We can click find our downloads and you have to have a file downloaded from like Thingiverse or something you designed on some other CAD software. You find it, you open it up and I'll just, I'm just opening the Binchy right now just to show. And so you open your file and it'll take a second to open and then there it is. There's our, there's our model. So that's my model Binchy right there. Okay, so we have our model, and that's what, that's what it's going to look like. But let's see. Let's, so we can start up here by changing what we want the layer height to be. And so basically, the farther to the left you go, um, the higher the quality it's going to be, but it's going to take longer. And so my I usually go to 0.15 right here. So I drag that little dot to 0.15. I think that's a good... There's a decent, I mean, it's like good quality, but good speed. So it's not taking forever, but it's still a pretty good quality. And this is your infill bar. And so infill depends on what you're printing. So like this Binchy, I don't need much infill because I'm not going to be putting a lot of pressure on it where it's going to need a lot of strength. So... 20, 10 to 25% infill is good. You don't you don't necessarily need to go over 25% for a model like this. But if you had like functioning parts or tools or something like that, you might want to increase the infill to make it stronger. Um, which you can just kind of scroll around on here. But for now, I think since this is the Benchy, I'll leave it at 20. That's enough for a Benchy. So that's basically all you do on this page. Um, there's some other things here and like enable gradual where you gradually increase the infill and then generate supports for this model. You don't need supports. Um, but if you think there's a model where you need supports where there's overhangs that you, um, you can turn supports on, uh, and that's where you do that, which is nice. You can just turn it on and then it just adds supports wherever you want, or, or wherever it's necessary and you can adjust the support settings and I'll show you how to do that a little later on in the video. And then you can turn on build play adhesion, which is all you always need to have that on pretty much. Um, because uh when you start a print the nozzle, the filament isn't gonna come straight out. Like it takes a second. And so if you have build play adhesion, it adds a little ring or a brim or whatever you change it to to get the filament around in a little bit and then it starts the models. But that's pretty necessary if you want a good first layer because then the filament is ready to go when it starts your actual print. So always have that on. But you can adjust that and I'll show you how to do that later on. And now we can switch over here. So this is all the recommended stuff and then you can switch over here where it says custom. Click on that, and this is where you can adjust things a little bit farther. And then if you don't, so we'll start like this, the layer height. Um, so depending on how much you know about 3D printing, 
and stuff like that, you can adjust this to where it's basic, advanced, or expert. I like to keep it at advanced because I feel like that gives you all that you need, but you can change it however you like it. And so this will just basically open up a lot of, of more options for things you can change. So there's a lot of stuff to work with. We'll start up here though. Layer height, 0.15, you can always change that to like 0.13 or something. Whatever you like is fine. Then I just keep it at 0.15. And then this other stuff I never mess around with. Um, unless, see where it says 0.4 over here? That's dependent on the size of your nozzle. It defaults to 0.4. Um, because that's like the standard size for a nozzle, but if you, like, you need to check your nozzle size in case it's different, then you can adjust it there. But that's usually, you, none of that, really, you never really need to worry about any of that stuff. Shell, um, I never really mess with this, this any, any of this stuff, because I don't think any of it's really necessary. Um, I never changed, I never edited these settings, and my prints are always are fine. But uh, if you hover over it, it can tell you what that's going to do. And so depending on if you need it stronger, you can adjust the wall thickness, the wall line count, which will basically just make the outside thicker so that it has more strength, I guess. And then, yeah, you can just read about all that stuff. Bottom layers basically means the amount of layers, like like full infill layers it will do until it starts the infill which 8 is probably good. I mean, you can change that if you think it's taking too long, or if you don't think it needs all 8, you can adjust that. Um, and then all this other stuff, I wouldn't really mess with. I think it's all good. Infill, you can adjust the infill here, at the density, and then you can adjust the type. There's a lot of different infill types. My personal favorite is cubic subdivision. Um, I'll show you what that is later, but the reason I like it is it's because like a 3D infill, which is really cool. So you can um, it basically adds in um, support and strength in all the dimensions. Which so I definitely would, I like to change the cubic subdivision. Um, that doesn't really it doesn't matter at all. And you can you can mess around with all these because there's a lot, but that's my favorite. Um, Printing temperature, it's gonna default to 200, but if you're printing in PLA, I found for best results to increase that printing temperature to 210. That's that's what I would do. Um, but you can adjust the temperature um, depending on what material you're printing, and most materials will tell you what temperature to print at, but for PLA, I usually do 210. I feel like that gives me the best, most clean and glossy results. Um, uh, and then I don't never, you shouldn't, you don't, you shouldn't need to adjust the bed temperature. 60 degrees on the bed is perfect. I've found, um, the other stuff, I just leave it how it is. I think it's perfect. And then retraction, um, this is all up to you, but retraction basically reduces stringing and stuff like that, which can be helpful. And so retraction distance, I actually adjust these. I make it retract farther and then make it retract faster, because um, then you it eliminates a lot of the stringing. No, oops, what happened? All right, it eliminates a lot of the stringing, um, which makes your prints cleaner. Retracted layer change. Uh, I always I usually turn that on because then when it um, goes up to the next layer, it retracts, which will reduce the amount of like little um, what are they called? artifacts and little globs of filament sticking out so I do that and then print speed um, I always lower it I find for best results you should print between 30 um, and 30 and 45 uh, so you can change that but I'll leave 35 right now for this uh, and for the rest of the stuff I'll get to that in another and we'll get to the rest of the stuff in a second.